Okay, um, so as you know, in Alabama, there's a lot of immigrants that drive without a license. Um, do you think maybe they should be able to get a driver's license? Not at present. Not at present? There's no political support for it, very candidly. The governor of New York found that out when he tried to institute a policy to allow people to get licenses. Uh, politics is about the art of the possible. We have a lot of teaching to do on the immigration front in terms of altering public opinion and beginning to speak to the public mood on this issue. And sometimes that means one step at a time. So the driver's license policies haven't worked with that enormous political friction. And I think we have to be very careful as we go forward to try to build policies that can attract public support. Because a public backlash is frankly what happened several years ago. The immigration bills were being debated in the Senate public backlash can set back the cause of immigration reform. And if our goal is to have viable policies, and if our goal is to have uh, policies that work, it's a prerequisite in democratic society that those policies attract public support. Okay, what about the raids? Um, what do you think of those? Because you know how some, the families are deported and the children are left here alone, being Americans. and they kind of come more risk of being, you know, joining gangs or committing crimes. What do you think of those? Should those be stopped or at least well, suspended? We can enforce our mm -hmm. immigration laws in a way that doesn't do violence to children. I'm convinced of that. I don't think there's a trade-off between an enforcement policy and policies that are humane towards children. As you know, as many people in your audience know, if you're born in the United States, you're an American citizen. We're a country that conveys citizenship upon birthright. It's been the way for a very long time, and frankly, most Americans, not all, but most Americans are comfortable and happy with that. I don't think you can form good policies that are destructive of children. So these are no easy questions, but we've got to work our way toward policies uh, that do have, obviously, the humanity that a good, decent society would expect. Now, obviously, we've got to figure out how to enforce our laws. But the way you begin to enforce laws, in my opinion, is to deal with employers who are victimizing people. That's a legitimate, effective kind of enforcement. Because you're going to people who are deliberately taking advantage of folks and are deliberately thwarting the laws or doing that not to benefit the immigrants but to benefit themselves. That's a legitimate area of enforcement. But as we work our way through, not just in Alabama but the entire country, We've obviously got to make sure that our policies aren't adversely affecting people who are perfectly lawful. No policies that are cruel to children are just policies in a good society. So again, we've got to work our way through the details, and we've got to work our way through building confidence in our laws and making our laws work. Okay. Um, well, those are all my questions of my part. I don't know if John has some questions that you want to ask the congressman. Congressman, I ha just have one question. Okay. <clears throat> what kind of message would you like for the Latinos in Alabama? What kind of message do you think they you want to tell them about you becoming the next governor? of the great state of Alabama? Well, the message that I want to convey to Latinos in Alabama is I want to be governor of the whole state of Alabama. I don't want to just lead part of the state. I want to lead the whole state. Alabama is open and welcome to everyone who's complied with American laws. We're a stronger and more vibrant country if we include more people and we're a stronger and more vibrant state if we include more people. So, I may not have a special message for Latinos per se, and we're going to have a special message for blacks or whites, but I do have a special message for anyone who lives in this state, who's a citizen of this state in this country, who wants to see Alabama be more ambitious than it's been when it comes to all the ways that you measure our community. I encounter Latino families all the time in my district. Their goals for their children and their families are in many cases indistinguishable from the goals of black people or white people. They want good schools for their kids. Many of them run businesses and they want a good business climate. They want to be treated fairly and they want to be responsible players in the community. 
They don't want anything extra, but nor do they want to be disadvantaged because of who they are. Well, in other words, they want the things that come with citizenship and the responsibilities and the privileges. That's what we have to talk about being one community. Make that my last point. If we are to be one community in this state, we have to understand our obligations and responsibilities toward each other. With rights come responsibilities. With rights come the responsibility of following the law, of doing the right thing, of serving the community. If we have that ethic, our state will be stronger than it's ever been. It will look different than it's ever looked, but it will also be stronger than it's ever been. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Thank you so much okay. for your time. Thank you. I really appreciate it for your time. Uh, thank you. No.